All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're definitely talking now about unit number seven, and we're going to talk about day number four, and we'll follow this guy with day number five, okay? Now, the big key on this one is it happens to fall into a category which I refer to as the ladder theorem, all right? And this ladder theorem is going to be the same kind of picture that you're going to see every single time. And it's a proportionality rule that relates the ideas about the segments of this picture that's going on right here. Now, for simplicity's sake, and to keep these same kind of questions all the same, no matter what, whenever we tackle a ladder theorem question, we're going to see the same picture over and over again, and I want you to do the same thing on every single one of them. And that is, take this picture and break it into two parts, okay? We're going to take this picture, which is an overlapping idea of two triangles, and we're going to break it. So I want you to break it up no matter what. Now, from many years of experience, this particular question tends to give people tons of problems because they don't follow this main rule right here, which is to break it up. You're going to break up the smaller triangle that's listed right here, and you'll ultimately see a smaller triangle. That one is going to be triangle ADABD. All right, like just like that. And then you're going to see a larger triangle, which extends all the way down here to the bottom and down this way and back up. And you're going to break that into the larger triangle of A, C, and E. Now, here's the reason why I say break these up. is You can easily see that when you dra draw these two triangles separately of each other, that you can recognize that one side is definitely proportional to another side and vice versa. You can see how they're connected to each other. When they're overlapped in the actual original ladder theorems, they become very difficult to understand which pieces should actually match one another. So if you do it this way, you'll never get the problems wrong. That's the big key right here. Now, in these diagrams, what you're going to try first is to decide whether or not these shapes are causing the lines to be parallel. In these ladder theorems, the reason why it's referred to as a ladder is because when we think about the rungs of a ladder, we really think about these individual rungs being parallel to each other. So they're really asking whether or not these two lines are parallel. And they would only be parallel if the triangles turn out to be similar in the long run. So again, this whole entire picture right here, as soon as you see it, you're just like, dude, I got to break it up. There's a smaller triangle in this particular case that has a 3 and a 4. And then there's a bigger triangle, which has, and now when you look at this bigger one, you're going to have to add the dimensions together. Think about I'm going the entire distance between this, so this would be a 30 side, and this would be a 40 side. And what they're asking here is, is if I set up the proportion, does it work out? Is 3 to 30 the same ratio as 4 is to 40? And each one of those would reduce to 1 tenth, and that one would be one-tenth as well. And you'd be like, yeah, it absolutely checks out. If that checks out that way, yep, the lines are actually parallel to each other. And that's your indicator of what it does, okay? Now, I am a firm believer that if you break these triangles, you will never get the problems wrong. And some people will be like, no, you just got to check the individual parts. And I will tell you, doing parts can sometimes mess people up. Now, if I take the same triangle and I break it up, I would be looking at a smaller triangle, which has got an 8 and a 12, and a larger triangle, let's make sure you add it up right, full entire side is 11, and full entire side is x plus 12. Now, that's probably the hardest part right there, is to understand you're talking about 
all the way. It's not 12x, it's x plus 12 more. And then when you set up your proportion, you won't get it wrong. 8 is to 11, 8 is to 11, as 12 is to x plus 12. 12 is to x plus 12, and then you cross multiply and solve. Okay, so little cross multiplication here, 11 times 12, that's 132. And if you don't believe me on that, let's make sure we get that part right. 11 times 12, and I would get 132. This diagonal, and this is very good and important for us to remember that that would be 8x plus 8 times 12, because you got to distribute across the whole entire thing. That ultimately would be, oh, let's check my calculator, what's 8 times 12? I just don't know my 12s very well. And that would be 96. And then I would subtract and divide by 8. So if I move that guy over there by subtraction and I divide by 8, what number would I get? 132 minus the 96, and then take that answer and divide by 8. And I would get an answer of 4.5. Okay, so x equals 4.5. Now, here's the ticket to this. Don't try to learn this any other way than the way that I'm explaining it here. If you break every one of these triangles up, you will get it right every single time. Okay, it is a definite for sure concept. That's just how they work out. Okay, find A to E, like this one in number three. Two separate triangles. Just make them separate no matter what so that you get them right. Top triangle, 8 by 10. Bottom triangle, 11 by 10 plus x. Oops, not 10x. Ooh, I made that mistake. Not going to do that. 10 plus x. Now I've got myself a combination of the things I need. 8 is to 11, all right, 8 is to 11, as 10 is to 10 plus x. And you cross, multiply, and solve again. That's 110 for one dimension. That's 80 plus 8x. And if I subtract and divide, I'll get 8x is equal to, well, I think that's 30. And if I divide by 8 on each side, I'm going to get a decimal. That's 30 over 8, which is 3.75. X equals 3.75. Done. There's your answer. Okay? Straight up, break the triangle into congruent parts. Let's try it one more time. Right next door here, same picture that's been showing up every time. You just got to make sure you break it up right. Small triangle is going to be x plus 6 by 21. Big triangle is going to be, look, they're showing the full distance is 30. And this full distance would be this guy added to that one, which would be 2x plus 6. We're adding the two values together to get the full length. Now, I set up my proportion. 21 is to 30. Okay, so we're always kind of going from one object to the other is equal to 21 is to 30 as x plus 6 is to 2x plus 6. And if I cross multiply and solve, there should never be any issues. That dimension, 30x plus 180, because I'm making sure I distribute, is equal to uh, that dimension, 42x plus, ooh, what's six, 6 times 21? Let's find out. 6 times 21 is 126. 126 right here. Now, move your axis to one side, numbers to the other. Subtract that guy over there. I would end up with 12x. Subtract this one onto the other side. So I'm subtracting 126 from 180. And I would end up with 180 minus 126. Just off the top of my head, I don't know that one. 180 minus 126. And I would end up with 54. And then I take 54 and I would divide that answer by 12. Divided by 12. Cha-ching, 4.5. That's how big X is. All right? So 
key ingredient in every one of these kind of questions. They all look exactly the same. Check them all out. They all have that triangle within a triangle concept. Break them up. That's the way to get this stuff done. Okay. Now, another one of the things that you might run into is what really starts to kind of look like a ladder kind of idea. And when you do these kind of questions, what you can do is you can actually make your proportions either, I would always try to make my proportions left to right. So when we compare a question that looks like this in terms of kind of broken out pieces, it would be AB is related to DE. And then that one from the other side, CB, is related to EF. Okay. Now, I always go left to right just to keep myself consistent. The arrows have to be consistent. They go both to the right, both to the right. Don't go one, one, one way and one the other way. That makes no sense. Okay. And it is okay for you to skip lines, too, as well, if you need to make those kinds of comparisons. Okay. So, like in this particular idea... The only way these two lines are going to be even remotely parallel to each other, and I don't know why it's saying AB and BC are parallel. That makes no sense. They're really trying to decide whether or not AD is parallel. Oh, no. They're trying to decide if they're congruent. Ooh, I wasn't reading that right. So are these two equal to each other? Well, if these two are going to be equal to each other, then it'll force these guys that are across from them to be equal to each other as well, okay? That's just a concept of congruent concepts that are going on there. Now, if you really wanted to prove this, you could prove it by picking a side length, like say, hey, this is five, and writing your proportion, you'd ultimately end up getting the exact same thing. So subtract the 3x over here, add the 18 to the other side, x is equal to 6. And if you needed to find Fe, You'd pick this up and plug it back in, and they'd turn out to be the same congruent parts. 6 times 6, 36, minus 18 would end up being 18. All right, so this answer right here is 18 in terms of its size. All right, now, biggest piece I would say here, the proportionality or ladder theorem, straight up, best idea you can do, break it up, okay? It is a break it up scenario all the time. If you break them up, you get them right. If you don't, you don't. Okay? This is a direct concept of break it up that you really want to focus on. Small one would be six by four. Big triangle is 14. That's the big part where everybody misses it by X. And if you do the break it up concept, you get them right no matter what kind of question it is. 6 is to 14, as 4 is to x, and you cross, multiply, and solve. 6x is equal to, uh, that's going to be 4 times 6, 14. That's 16, 56 is, I think, what we're going to get. And if we divide by 6 on each side, I would get an answer of, and it's going to be a decimal, 56 divided by 6. And we get an answer of 9.3 for x. 9.3 repeating. But the key is break it up. That's how you get these always right. It's the same question every single time. Okay? Triangle on this one is 2 by x. Bigger triangle. How big is he? Oh, that's 14. This dimension is 8 because that's how far it is all the way down. I never use these little tiny individual segments ever. I always break it up and do whole pieces. 2 is to 8 as x is to 14. Cross multiply solve. Uh, that's going to be 8x is equal to 28. And you divide and get another decimal answer. So answer there, 28 divided by 8. Cha-ching, bada-bing, 3.5 is what your answer is going to be for that, okay? Now, basic idea here is, you see this picture? Break it up, okay? If you see the ladder side-to-side -side concept, always set up your ratios from left to right, left to right, and you will get those right every time, too. It's a really easy section, and day five is extremely similar to this. 
All right, give this bad boy a shot and you should be just fine. Now, actually, I'm thinking maybe, no, no, all right. Give this guy a shot. You got it. 